it's time for another episode of what's on my Nintendo Switch where I show you guys all the games that I've gathered, I've bought, I've collected, I've added to my Nintendo Switch collection. And of course I'll link all the games down below so if you want to pick them up, you can pick them up for yourself. Now these games I've added to my collection are on top of the games that I've already talked about in the previous what's on my Nintendo Switch videos. So go watch the whole series of videos where I talk about all the games that I've added to my collection. Sounds good to you, sounds good to me. Cool. Oh yeah, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe down below and hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload. This month is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be um, a little eccentric. These aren't your everyday titles that you're used to. A couple of them are, but not all of them are. Of course, I take your suggestions. So if you have any games that you think I need to be playing, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to add me on my Nintendo Switch, my friend code is in the description below. Now, the first game I'm going to talk about today is a game that was sent to me by my homies over at Super rare games now if you don't know about super rare games they're a company that specializes in creating limited run versions of digital only games you can check them out at superraregames.com link is in the description below and the first game is lovers in a dangerous space time now if you don't know about this game it's basically like a space shooter type video game developed by asteroid base you can play with up to four players and basically you pilot a spaceship with a bunch of different stations inside of it and in these stations they control things like the weapons the engine and the shield and you can control your little avatar you got to move from station to station in order to try to balance the flying ship protect it from damage and attack different enemies there are four different campaigns in this game each of them contain four levels in a boss fight you also get like a new experience every time because the levels are random so each time you play it's a new experience next up on my nintendo switch is a game that i've put i believe over 60 hours into and it's probably not a game that you're thinking about it's pit cross Two. I can't even front. I am addicted to this game. It's one of those games that you can just pick up and play anywhere, anytime. If you played the original Pit Cross on the Nintendo Switch and you loved it as much as I did, you've been waiting for some more levels. It's absolutely worth it. You got standard Pit Cross, you got Mega Pit Cross, and you got this little puzzle mode and whatnot where you're piecing together this picture. It's pretty cool. Pretty much if you like puzzle games, you probably like Pit Cross too. Another game that I added to my Nintendo Switch collection, it's different. It's a little bit weird in a good way though because the game is actually pretty decent and that is Gal Gun 2. That is one of those games I added to my collection just to have it in my collection because it will be a hard to find game in the future. So if you're trying to purchase games that you may not be able to find way down the line, Gal Gun is probably one of those games. But basically it's a rail shooter type game where you're trying to fend off waves of female classmates. It's highly sexualized. In spite of its ridiculousness, it's actually gotten pretty decent reviews. It's not a completely terrible game. Of course, it ain't win nobody's game of the year awards and you may sit and ask yourself why the hell am i playing this but you're not going to feel like you're playing an incompetent game and the next game that i added to my nintendo switch collection that i can't wait to start playing is the crash bandicoot insane trilogy i love these games on the original playstation of course if you haven't played the original crash games where the hell have you been maybe you're too young if so it's making me feel really really old basically crash is i mean you should already know it's a platforming adventure series originally released back in the late 90s this is pretty much a remaster of the first three crash bandicoot games pretty much you're going through level by level trying to stop dr neo cortex from taking over the world just like any original games you use spinning and jumping techniques you smash crates collect items and you've got those aku aku masks the trilogy adds a few new features and you can play almost every level as crash's sister coco and they've also like remastered the audio and all the different cutscenes and whatnot and the dialogue is voice acted by some of the more recent voice actors for the franchise and while this version of the insane trilogy doesn't run the best on the nintendo switch and i don't really understand why i mean blame the developers for that one if you are a fan of crash and you are Nintendo Switch owner. I feel like this is a must have. It's definitely worth checking out. And another game that I added to my Nintendo Switch just to have it in my collection. I swear, don't judge me. Hello Kitty Cruisers. Now you may be asking me, why the hell would you buy Hello Kitty Cruisers on the Nintendo Switch? Well, because Hello Kitty Cruisers was the rarest game ever released on the Wii U. If it ain't a collector's edition game, there is no game rarer than Hello Kitty Cruisers on the Wii U. So why wouldn't I, this Nintendo Switch game collector, purchase Hello Kitty cruisers for the nintendo switch just in case it may become rare hmm 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 think about it i mean 
What's the game about? Honestly, doesn't matter. It's a Hello Kitty racing game featuring some Sanrio characters. If you are a Hello Kitty fan out there, shouts out to you Hello Kitty fans. Go ahead, pick it up, add it to your collection. It's Hello Kitty, why not? It's a racing game. Is it a good racing game? No, it's not something I would recommend anybody pick up unless, again, you are a Hello Kitty fan. These next three games right here are from a company called Limited Run Games. Limited Run Games is similar to Super Rare Games. They also specialize in creating limited release versions of digital only games, except they're an American based company, whereas Super Rare Games is a European based company. So, shouts out to both sides of the pond. And these games are Saturday Morning RPG, which is developed by Mighty Rabbit, Flint Hook, which is developed by Tribute, and Mercenary Kings, the Reloaded Edition, which is also developed by Tribute. Basically, Saturday Morning RPG is a Japanese RPG type game, and you control a character named Marty in this open world. The story itself is structured in like an episodic fashion, like a lot of Saturday morning cartoons. You can play the episodes in pretty much any order you want to, and your stats can be transferred between episodes. In the game, you control Marty, who's like this average high school student who gains extraordinary power through a magical notebook. His power allows him to use everyday objects in battle against the evil forces of the hood. And as you go through the game, you'll discover new battle objects and new foes to fight. It's got a bunch of 80s nostalgia, a lot of pop culture references from that time as well. Now, Flint Hook is an action platformer type game where you use like a grappling hook to traverse these procedurally generated spaceships for different treasure and whatnot. The hook is used on enemies as well. You also get like a plasma gun. It's got this cool pixel art aesthetic. Basically, you're trying to unlock different bounties to hunt down because you are this space pirate. They say you're like Spider-Man with a gun. And then Mercenary Kings is is a side-scrolling shoot 'em up type game. Here you can basically jump, crotch, roll, shoot, and use a bunch of different melee attacks to make your way through a hundred plus missions. You have up to four player co-op, which is pretty cool. You can access all the levels from like a central hub, which is similar to games like Monster Hunter. There's also like a customization system where you can craft weapons, knives, armor, and different types of things to give your character unique abilities and whatnot. But yeah, pay attention to sites like Limited Run Games and Super Rare Games, so you can jump on these physical gems. They're always releasing new titles for the Nintendo Switch that you wouldn't be able to find in stores anywhere. And the last game, the final game that I've added to my Nintendo Switch collection is Mega Man Legacy Collection and Mega Man Legacy Collection 2. Now we all know about Mega Man. Mega Man is a fantastic platforming series by the legendary Capcom. The Legacy Collection, it's a collection of the classic Mega Man games. Mega Man Legacy Collection includes Mega Man 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Six, and then Mega Man Legacy Collection 2 has Mega Man 7, 8, 9, and 10. There are also some bonus features and whatnot, including different challenge modes, online leaderboards, and this Mega Man History Museum featuring concept art and other stuff as well. They try to keep intact all the gameplay elements that you know and love from the series. Of course, the visual style as well. Definitely worth picking up if you are a Mega Man fan. Like I said, this is like an odd bunch of games that I've added to my collection this month. I hope you found something in there that you may be interested in checking out as well. That's obviously the point of this video. Let me know what you guys think, and I'm gonna go ahead and play some more Hello Kitty.